and I'm back. <laughs> this time with episode three. Now, I know I said in my last video that episode two and three were gonna be smushed together, but it turns out I had a lot more to say about episode three, which is really weird considering that like nothing truly happens is the best way I can say that because, oh, okay, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna speed run this, kinda. I'ma try, cause this episode has some good things, but is overall annoying from a story standpoint. But you know what? We're just gonna recap this thing, so let's go. Okay, so we open on the cat no one will ever remember, but we cut to Charlie. She's hanging a happy first week banner, so we know it's been a week since last episode, though Vecchi's dialogue makes it seem like it's not the case, but it does lead into a funny setup of Charlie saying she hasn't seen Sir P do anything bad at the hotel only for him to roll out a weapon and say he's going to use it on the residents at the hotel because they're being too nice and he doesn't trust it though i'm not sure what he means by nice but this is hell so maybe the middle finger is like a wave either way sir p talking about trust gives charlie the idea to incorporate trust into the lesson plans which okay look these episodes keep saying there's lesson plans slash activities that the sinners participate in to help them be redeemed but from what all we've seen and heard from charlie it kind of sounds like she pulls this shit from her ass like i know it's episode three but what is charlie's actual plan to help sinners because my group therapy sessions are better than whatever charlie's doing hell the aa meeting across the street seems to be doing better i'm trying so hard not to be mean about this but if this is an adult type show i wish there was more deep discussion about redemption and the human condition slash struggle you know but anyway that got off topic sorry i should also point out that we we get a hint to carmela since her daughter's still deliver Sir P's parts, but Vaggy lays down some ground rules of no weapons or hurting people at the hotel, and Sir P's egg minions need to go. Which, what, why? They're not doing anything. They're clearly only a threat with the weapons, since they're basically toddlers who don't know any better. Also, side note, are they sinners, or did Sir P lay them? Because I don't think they're hellborns, but Vaggy says if he wants to redeem himself, he has to get rid of them. And it's like, Charlie, hello, look at how upset he is. He clearly loves them. So again, why? <laughs> Though, honestly, I will say the whole scene was hilarious. Uh, Vaggy goes to Alistair's room to tell him to get rid of the eggs, which, um, Vaggy, sweetie, why don't you do it? Or better yet, just take them outside and be like, you're free, only for them to follow her around and ruin whatever she's doing with Charlie. Either way, Alistair takes them as he's leaving the hotel. Also, how did he get a deer? Where did it even come from? It doesn't even look demonic, but whatever. We cut to Charlie going over her trust building idea, and I find it funny when she says there's been tension in the hotel. We cut to everyone being somewhat normal for them, but Charlie explains that the person who falls has to say something vulnerable about themselves, which feels more like a get to know you game, but still. Vaggy is about to give Charlie the floor when Charlie says she'd like Vaggy to lead on this one, which Huh? She says it's because she trusts everyone, but it's like, okay, that's not really a problem, kind of, when doing trust exercises or possibly teaching about trust, since Vaggy is the last person to trust anyone besides Charlie. And since this is before we learn Vaggy's an angel, we could give her the excuse of still being new to hell and has yet to let most of her guard down. I mean, hell is still very bad, but for the others, it's a typical Tuesday. Uh, Vaggy tries to decline, but Charlie says it'll be easy for her and we get probably the best joke of the episode drill sergeant vaggy is so fun and cute and made thinking about her possible life super fun anyway she asks who wants to go first and charlie goes saying she loves everyone no one catches her except Vaggy, which I'm pretty much with everyone on this one. I don't fully believe when people say they love someone after only knowing them for like a few weeks. It's weird. Anyway, everyone has a turn. And again, Sir Peace steals the show with his performance and joke of no one catching him, but Charlie and Vaggy do anyway. And though I love Nifty with my whole heart, her pain joke was not funny. Neither was like the murdering mother bugs in front of their young or whatever. I didn't laugh. But anyway, Charlie pulls Vaggy away to say the exercise isn't going the way she hoped, which what do you mean? You just started. You have to do it like more than once for there to be some level of trust to build. But Charlie is about to say something, but Vaggy says she needs to trust her, which I mean, okay, Vaggy, we only did the exercise once. Maybe do it a few more times before going, we need to do something else. Anyway, Angel overhears and says he has an idea. Vaggy asks what he has in mind, and instead of seeing what he suggested, we go right to Alistair walking with the eggs and running into an overlord. They chat about stuff 
we already knew. Alistair was gone, lives with Charlie. But I will say I do love Zestiel. I'm not a huge fan of his design, but I love the banter between him and Alistair. Plus his style of speech is very cool. I wish more characters did that, not his specific talking. I meant like different manners of speech throughout history. I wish more characters did that. Anyway, they get to the meeting that Carmela, the weapons dealer overlord is holding about the extermination, but also points out Alistair being there is a surprise and seems to kickstart Alistair's petty behavior of people not remembering him or not caring he was gone, which I mean, if you disappeared for seven years, I'd assume you were dead. I mean, we're in hell. Attachments seem pointless when you could die at the end of every year. Anyway, Velvet kicks her way into the meeting, which I'm surprised because you'd think Box would be frothing at the mouth to be in the same room as Alistair. But she says her very, in my opinion, cringe lines of being shocked Vox doesn't have more faith in her and that everyone at the meeting is old and sucks. Which girl, you came with no backup, no way to defend yourself. If someone truly snapped, these people would not care. Plus there's angelic weapons literally on the wall. Check your surroundings. But whatever, Carmilla goes back to what she was talking about, but gets interrupted by Velvet and she chucks the angel's head from episode one onto the table, stating the angels can be killed and that hell should go to war with heaven. Zestia interrupts and says all the important questions. How do we know a demon did it? How do we know it's even real? Which all good points, honestly, because this is probably the first time anyone has seen a dead angel. Everyone agrees and Velvet tries to push Zestiel's buttons only to start Camilla up on the first song of the episode. And it's good, total bop, very catchy, but kind of silly. Plus the camera angles are lightning fast, really made it hard to watch. Anyway, Velvet makes the comment that Carmilla knows why the angel is headless. And Carmilla says the meeting is over and everyone leaves and this character pretty much says what I was thinking. <laughs> What the hell? We literally just got here. Anyway, Alistair leaves an egg boy behind to spy and we get back to the A plot. Everyone is at a bondage dungeon, which okay, yeah, Angel is kind of right. There does need to be trust and bondage, but that's not the kind of trust I think Charlie and Baggy had in mind, but the scene doesn't last that long. But I do gotta say, how is Charlie uncomfortable when not two episodes ago, she was watching two people bang out their window? Like, ma'am. <laughs> But Charlie tries to say that she can help Vaggy or relieve her of duty or whatever. But Vaggy has this weird line of dialogue about how she told Charlie she can trust her and she's not going to let her down. And when I say weird dialogue, I mean like there hasn't been much buildup for this level of commitment or view on, on why Vaggy is trying so hard. Like we know it's probably because of the angel thing, but in the long haul, it kind of isn't. Plus... At this time, we don't know that Vaggy's an angel, so... So, uh, yeah, anyway, Vaggy says she'll teach the group about trust the way she was, and we cut to a part of hell that is constantly fighting. Vaggy says there's nothing stronger than Conrad's in arms, which I guess she's right, but, like, the bond is deeper when you think your friend's gonna die, and we learn later angels don't fight with fear, so... Yeah. Also, I cannot imagine Adam talking this way, so whoever trained the angels was probably loot. But anyway, Vaggy chucks Sir P and Angel off a building, and Nifty goes too. Charlie is super not into what Vaggy is doing, and says there's other ways to learn trust, it just takes time, and Vaggy makes the point it's time they don't have, which again, the hotel is not really on the line right now, but Vaggy states that if they don't hurry up, then how many more times are they going to have to watch exterminations happen before they change? Which, okay, I kind of get it. They're tired of watching shit happen over and over. And Vaggy and Charlie have probably been talking about this for years, so they're way more committed. But for everyone else, this is like a month in. Of course, it's gonna take more time. I often wonder if Vaggy doesn't even believe in Charlie's goal and just wants to make her happy for saving her, since she knows heaven kind of sucks and would never say yes. So their relationship, from my point of view, kind of seems like those, I need to repay my debt to you, but also with the mixed in, I love you but anyway Vaggy again has some weird ass lines about how she's supposed to make Charlie's dreams a reality um okay that's a bit much and then says she's supposed to protect and never fail Charlie to which Charlie tries to talk to Vaggy but she gets cut off with Vaggy saying if she can't help her then what's the point of her and Charlie says don't say that you do so much and it's like really because I've kind of seen her do nothing other than try and make a commercial for you but also I know they've been together for a while but man Charlie kind of sucks at communicating like if this is how Vaggy is feeling then something is wrong your partner shouldn't have to feel like your happiness is their main 
second priority because it's making her feel worthless for not making it happen. But Vaggie asks to be alone and Charlie does, which is good because Vaggie asks for space. But she kind of drops the ball also because she doesn't stick around till Vaggie's ready. She just leaves with Angel and Sir P while Vaggie is still all alone in the worst part of hell. Anyway, we cut to Carmilla drinking and saying how barbaric. My Spanish is a little rusty, but I think she's talking about velvet. But Zestiel clocks her as being the one who killed the angel and that she should tell all of hell, but she says no. She knows that a war would break out if she does and wants to avoid that for her kids. And I just have to say this, but I give zero fucks about this character and her struggles. Like, I don't even know her, yet I'm supposed to feel for her out of nowhere. Like, yeah, she's cool and so is Zestiel, but still, the buildup to this moment is so unearned, including the song. Like, yeah, boss song, love it, though Vaggie's a little high-pitched, but I don't care enough about Carmilla singing because I don't care about her. But meanwhile, Vaggie's singing too, and some of her lines, I'm like, okay, cool, and others, yeah, sure, Jan. Anyway, Alistair learns Carmilla killed the angel. We cut to Charlie and Vaggie at the hotel talking, and it's fine. Vaggie says she's sorry she got crazy, and Charlie apologizes as well, saying she's sorry she put so much pressure on her. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get into this. But Charlie just cuts to talking about the whole redemption thing going easier. Like, ma'am, come back here and finish talking about your relationship with your girlfriend, who's got this weird complex now due to you, but whatever. She praises Vaggie for what her exercise did, for the patrons and they're all having fun talking about what happened and Husk praises Sir P and Sir P thanks Angel for pulling him out of the situation which I seriously wish we got more Sir P and Angel becoming friends they'd have a really fun dynamic they all laugh we got another nifty joke I did not vibe with she was kind of not all that funny this episode but Alistair returns to the hotel with the eggs and Vaggie allows Sir P to keep them and Charlie makes the comment that things might move faster than she thinks and there's like this weird ass pause but we cut to sir p getting ready for bed and it's so cute i love that the eggs have pjs and that one egg that was with alistair says the knife lady killed the angel but sir p doesn't really believe anything they say and like it's an okay joke but i kind of would have preferred alistair monologuing about his discovery or a hint to what's to come but that's the end finally Okay, the A and B plot both kind of sucked. I tried. I really tried. Like, yes, I did enjoy some stuff, but man, if it didn't feel like a first draft. I mean, we're in episode three, so why are we learning who killed the angel this fast? And again, being introduced to more characters. And not only that, expected to care about them. Like, I'm sorry, I genuinely do not care about Camilla or her family. Want to know why? Because I have zero emotional attachment to her or her wants. Like, I just met her. Also, the setup lacked a lot for me. Like, I wish the meeting scene was a little bit longer and Velvet would keep interrupting and Carmilla would shut her down every time she had a good idea for what they could do to combat the angels. Like, try and prolong the fact Carmilla is the one that killed the angel, but also hint at her not wanting to be involved with all that stuff. You know, just hints. I would like more hints within the meeting scene instead of just being told right after the musical number. Also, why was Vox not at this meeting. Yeah, last episode, Alistair threatened him, kinda, but you think he'd be the first one there, ready to talk to Alistair and mess with him. Like, it would have been so much fun to see the outcome of how they actually interact in person. I feel a lot of the energy given between Lucifer and Alistair should have gone to Vox and Alistair's dynamic. Like, how fun would the meeting have been if they were forced to leave due to acting out and having to find ways back into the room, only to find the angel's head, giving them both both that info that an angel can be killed so both could be incorporated in the final showdown in their own way. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the Egg Boys, I do, but I truly would have preferred if this episode focused more on Vox and Alistair. I know last episode we kind of did and didn't, but still, but you know, a continuation of the two would have been better. Plus Velvet, like how cool would it have been if Vox asked Velvet to stall the meeting so he could get back in, and when talking to Carmilla and saying things that are actually great ideas makes Carmilla kind of want to give her a position with her company. Boom! Outer character story drama. <laughs> but as for the B plot... Jesus, it's so all over the place. Like this is supposed to be somewhat of a Vaggie focused episode, but nothing is done with it 
or nothing meaningful anyway. Like this episode's whole thing is trust. This could have been an awesome deep dive into Vaggie's lack of trust due to her being an angel. Like we the audience don't know she's an angel. So her lack of trust possibly being higher than the casts would have been a really interesting thing for the audience to think about in the long haul. And Cause like Vaggie has only ever known heaven and the trust of her fellow angels, which is really debatable. But it would have been fun if Vaggie pointed out or hinted that she only felt trust when fighting or, you know, something more vague than the your people line, which is kind of vague since Charlie's a princess. So all of hell are her people. So it'd be weird for Vaggie to say our people. But again, that pretty much just confirmed that Vaggie was an angel as soon as it as soon as it left her mouth. <laughs> But also, I wish Vaggie was more in control of what the cast did. Like, I liked Angel suggesting something, but Vaggie really should have been the one taking them all over the place and getting more and more desperate as they weren't getting what she was teaching. Like, really have her spiraling that she's failing Charlie. And Charlie finally snapping her out of it when all of them... That includes Husks, Charlie, and Vaggie all down there. <laughs> all down there in the turf war, making them have an actual conversation about how though Vaggie wants to help Charlie reach her goal and keep her happy, she's scared that if she can't do it in the time Charlie wants, then she'll have failed her and also thinking that Charlie would just abandon her if she couldn't make her dreams a reality. Making Charlie realize all the pressure she's been putting on Vaggie without realizing it. Like, I'm not asking for them to have a ginormous fight or just be dramatic. You know, I, I would just like a conversation about how the other is feeling and how they kind of overcorrect how they really feel to avoid thinking about the bad. I also know that Charlie at this point has no idea Vaggie is an angel, but it would have been nice if Vaggie said more things that again hinted to it. <laughs> Like Charlie's dream is her new purpose or without Charlie, she would be nothing. You know, something hinting to Vaggie's need to be useful since her purpose was to kill sinners for heaven, which we know now was a secret job that no one in heaven knew. So you can imagine fighting demonic beings with other angels and having Sarah possibly thank you for your service to heaven. So of course, Vaggie needs something to feel like she did before she was cast out. Plus, Charlie's love for heaven is probably what makes Charlie like her. It's a small comfort, even though she knows the truth, which again, I think it would have been really interesting if Vaggie hinted more to how heaven possibly could have worked. Like, Vaggie knows the ins and outs the same way Lucifer knows the ins and outs. Charlie has a completely, like, childish fantasy type view on heaven so it would have been nice for vaggie to hint that like heaven isn't what charlie thinks it is or this idea might not work the way you think because of possibly this you know vaggie hinting around the fact that heaven isn't what charlie thinks it is you know but again like this whole episode has some great setups to the character's deeper conflicts but kind of does nothing with it or just does the more watered down version like i would have loved to see the cast actually bond on screen but what we get is off screen and then retold in the hotel like 100% would have loved to see Angel and Sir P actually become friends considering what happened last episode <laughs> but yeah I will say the most of what I liked is the setup after that I didn't care for much sorry uh this is getting long okay let's just get on to the VAs <laughs> Okay, so we get three new characters. I'm not counting Carmilla's kids as they're barely characters as it is, but I think everyone did remarkably well. Carmilla was nice. I never knew much about the character other than her pilot self, but the VA did a super good job. The also, off topic, sorry, uh, there's some debate on if she's a sinner or a hellborn because she has kids. Obviously, the info might have changed, but during the pilot and all the live streams, sinners couldn't have kids, so she's either a hellborn or she and her kids died around the same time, or they're adopted, you know? But I wish at some point they would explain it, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, the second new character we got was Zestiel, and he was amazing, wonderful, and in fact, I loved every time he spoke. Then again, I love Old English, so I'm a bit biased, but even his singing voice was nice, and the Egg Boys, they were okay. They sounded somewhat similar to the pilot. I think it's hard to really tell since they didn't speak much in the pilot, 
But overall, they were good. I did enjoy their jokes so much more than anything else. And speaking of jokes, okay, so the jokes were kind of mid this episode. Like, don't get me wrong, I laughed at all the Sir P jokes, but everything after that, yeah, no, I was dead silent. Obviously, my sense of humor is crazy broken. I could admit to that. But I don't know, there was less to laugh at than usual, and any of the visual gags that they had went right over my head because I either couldn't see them or it was happening so fast I didn't have time to register what the characters were even doing. But I mean, I get it, this episode was clearly more song driven so let's get into that shall we <laughs> so yeah the songs were good musically respectless is probably gonna be stuck in my head forever but it didn't really feel like a musical type number if that makes any sense like it didn't feel like two characters talking about the ideas of going to war with the angels i mean i know that's not what the setup was but still that's kind of what kickstarted velvet into being an ass but i mean carmilla was pretty on point she was moving the argument along but velvet was like nah let me give you my whole resume on why i am the way i am like no one asked for that and we already knew most of what she said. She's like missing the whole point of what she was talking about before the song started up. It is until Carmilla brings up a point of the V's not listening that Velvet gets back on track about the Angel's head plot lines. So it's not like the song is totally useless, but I think it could have been shortened. Like it really didn't need to be a minute and a half long. Now, now as for whatever it takes, Man, I tried to like it. I really did. I mostly think it's just because Vaggie's VA and Carmilla's VAs aren't harmonizing all that well because they're two completely different styles and tones. So it's really hard to mesh those two like combative voices. <laughs> It was just really jarring, okay? It, it took me out of it real fast as soon as it happened. <laughs> also, personally, I really didn't think Carmilla needed to sing this song with Vaggie. I mean, we're three episodes in and we're giving two songs to a character we don't know. Meanwhile, Vaggie has to share said second song. And then in later episodes, we still don't get a freaking nifty song. Not fair. Not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but also, honestly, lyrically, the song bothers me, mostly Vaggie's side, though Carmilla is pretty one note about her reasons, but Vaggie is all over the place, and I already explained myself enough about Vaggie. I'm so tired of talking about Vaggie. But yeah, this overall episode was kind of weird for me because there were things that I genuinely did enjoy but they were so small and few in between. And what was supposed to be like the main focus for a specific character just completely went off to the wayside. And I was kind of disappointed by that as well. Oh, y'all are really gonna hate you for this, but I feel in my heart of hearts, which is so cringe to say, I have to give episode three a four out of 10. I'm so sorry to give it that rating. Like I tried, I really, really tried because there were good things. There were good things in there that I did enjoy, but it wasn't enough. There was too much inconsistency, story issues, songs and characters that I didn't care about, that I felt didn't need these things, you know, like, we're in episode three, we're in episode three. I have to keep reminding myself, we are in episode three. Yeah, we're like speed running so much stuff. And oh man, it's just gonna get worse. It's just gonna get worse. And I know it's gonna get worse. <laughs> At the end of the day, this was still fun. Again, I enjoyed what I enjoyed. Respectless is on my playlist. I know. <laughs> Anywho, I'm rambling, sorry. Uh, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Really helps out the channel and me. I hope you all have a super fantastic day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.